Hello, and welcome to System Administration and IT Infrastructure Services, Frequently Asked Questions and Answers. So let's get started. Question 1. What is a good policy to enforce on passwords? And what are the four main stages of hardware lifecycle? To the first question, the correct answer is, passwords are one of the first and biggest security policies that help prevent unauthorized access. A good policy for passwords is to make them long and with a mixture of symbols, numbers, uppercase, and lowercase characters. And for the second question, the correct answer is, the hardware lifecycle consists of four main stages, procurement, deployment, maintenance, and retirement. Question 2. What are the steps and stages of vendor lifecycle management? And the correct answers are, the vendor lifecycle management has three phases, pre-contract, contract, and post-contract. The vendor management lifecycle has seven stages, initial identification and engagement, vendor qualification and risk mitigation, vendor onboarding and information management, performance management, supply risk management, vendor relationship management, and vendor offboarding. Effective Vendor Risk Management, VRM, involves all stages of the vendor lifecycle. VRM includes risk assessments to ensure vendors maintain a healthy security posture and remediate any emerging cyber risks. Question 3. What are some examples of remote access tools? And the correct answers are, WinRM is a remote access tool for Windows OS. OpenSSH is a popular remote access tool for Linux OS. And RDP is a remote access tool for Windows OS. Question 4. What is the difference between TFTP and SFTP in IT? And the correct answer is TFTP, Trivial File Transfer Protocol, and SFTP, Secure File Transfer Protocol, are both file transfer protocols used in IT. TFTP allows for a simpler transfer of files without having to authenticate. If you wanted to host something that anyone could access, you could use TFTP over SFTP. In terms of security, SFTP is the easy winner. SFTP encrypts your data in transit. TFTP doesn't encrypt your data at all. Plus, SFTP authenticates your connection with your choice of user ID and password, or SSH keys. And TFTP has no security. Question 5. What service can you use to keep time synchronized across the machines on your fleet? And what's the difference between POP3 and IMAP? To the first question, the correct answer is NTP. NTP, or Network Time Protocol, is used to keep time synchronized across machines. And for the second question, the correct answer is IMAP and POP3 are email protocols that allow users to access and manage emails on remote servers. The main difference between the two is that IMAP is better for managing emails across multiple devices while POP3 is better for accessing emails from a single device. Question 6. What are the differences between TLS and SSL? And the correct answer is, SSL, or Secure Socket Layer, is less secured as compared to TLS, Transport Layer Security. TLS stands for Transport Layer Security, which is a cryptographic protocol successor of SSL. SSL is an older technology that contains some security flaws, Transport Layer Security, TLS, is the upgraded version of SSL that fixes existing SSL vulnerabilities. Question 7. What is the name of a protocol that lets users share files over a network? And HTTP status codes that begin with 4XX, like 404, indicate what? To the first question, the correct answer is Network File System, NFS is a networking protocol that allows users to store and retrieve data from multiple disks and directories on a shared network. NFS is a protocol that lets users share files over a network. And for the second question, the correct answer is client-side errors. 4XX HTTP status codes indicate an issue with the client, like entering a bad URL or accessing something they aren't authorized to access. Question 8. HTTP status codes that begin with 5XX, like 501, indicate what? And what do HTTP status codes beginning with 2XX indicate? To the first question, the correct answer is server-side errors. 5XX HTTP status codes indicate an issue with the server serving the web content. And for the second question, the correct answer is successful request. Successful requests begin with 2XX. Question 9. 
What benefits does directory server replication provide in directory services? And the correct answer is, directory server replication grants redundancy by having multiple copies of the database being served by multiple servers. The added servers that provide lookup services also reduce the latency for clients querying the service. The containers in a directory service are referred to as organizational units, OUs. Question 10. What are some of the most popular directory services protocol used today? And the correct answers are, here are some popular directory services protocols. Lightweight Directory Access Protocol, LDAP. This is the most popular directory services protocol for cloud and web applications. It provides a standard way for communication between directories and directory clients. Active Directory. Microsoft's Active Directory is the most commonly used directory service today. Users say that it is secure and easy to use. Kerberos. This is the most common authentication protocol in use today. It is designed around the concept of using tickets to provide access to network resources. That's it for now. Thanks for watching and stay motivated until the end. And please don't forget to check the next videos about IT support, operating systems frequently asked questions and answers. Take care and bye for now.